Hey guys, if you like the content, please be sure to like the videos and subscribe to the channel. Thanks. Quick reminder to check out this week's Mortar Pod, our video podcast, and also check out this week's Seems Good Magic card giveaway. Hey everybody, Alex from SeemsGoodMagic.com here, and we're doing a Swiss Theros full block draft. Our rare Hall of Triumph. Kind of cool if I'm tribal. This card must work really well with the Minotaur strategy, which is cool. Uh, there's also maybe a Seder strategy? Hall of Triumph's cool. I don't think I want to pick it, though. I think I'm really looking at Gnarled Scarhide, which I do think is actually a really good card. One drop creature, triggers constellation, two power, can also be used on your creatures to buff them or your opponent's creatures to make them not block. I really don't know how much more you could ask for in a one drop. There's also Thassa's Ire, which taps or untaps target creatures. I think this card's great, too. Uh, Mastiff is great. Swift Claw is great. Hubris is awesome. Good removal. A lot of good cards in this pack. I'm going to go with the Scarhide because I haven't played it yet. And But I named all the upsides, so hopefully that makes sense. Follow-up pick. Well, Dictate. Not really taking that. Tormented Thoughts. Not that either. Hubris we could take here. It's probably the best card remaining in this pack. Bounce spells are usually pretty good. Um, this one, I mean, bouncing bestow, not always better. I'll say that. But I think Hubris is probably the best card remaining here. Sky Spear's Calvary is pretty awesome. It's hard to argue against Double Strike flying in a format where Bestow is everywhere and good auras. Black-White is probably the color combination I do the least. I already know that Blue-Black is good. And I do think Removal is pretty good as well. Hubris seems like it could be really good. I'm going to take it. I like bounce effects. Alright, well, hey, another Gnarled Scarhide. I could take that. There's also Feast of Dreams, which is removal. Probably more relevant, but getting multiple one-drop, two-power guys seems good. Cory Colossus is a card that I think is actually really cool. I think I'm probably best off taking the Feast of Dreams. I do feel like this is a pretty fantastic card. Hard to argue against it. I do want this Gnarled Scarhide, and I don't think we're going to wheel it, but... I mean, I could take another one power, or one mana, two power guy. <clears throat> Hope to get some more. I think I just got to value the Feast of Dreams higher. Removal is so good. And this one in particular, pretty awesome in this format. Well, take a second one. Why not? There's also Cure's Dismissal, which is cool. Font of Fortunes, which is good. Rise of Eagles. Actually, just a lot of cards in here in general are pretty good, but we're going to take the removal again. Okay, so now we've got no blue picks, no real good black picks. Aspect is pretty playable. Uh, some decent red picks, decent green card. Nothing in here is too insane. Armament is more removal, but I'm not really feeling it. Could just take the aspect, but I've taken it a couple times now and I haven't found a real opportunity to play it. Could just take the Ravenous Le Crocota because it's got Vigilance and it gets huge. It's the last green card remaining in here. It's probably the best creature that was left in there. I don't know. Uh, okay, so now we've got Starfall, which is definitely removal. Spite of Mogus. Seems okay already in this deck, actually. The Iconoclast. I really wanted to play this card. I've definitely been meaning to play this card, I think. It's 
actually really good in this format. Is white open? I don't know. Is green open? I don't know. Red kind of appears to be open. I mean, it's hard to argue against Starfall. It's definitely removal. I do like the Iconoclast too. I'm not going to lie. But I'm going to take the Starfall. See if red's open. Well, it's a coin toss. Do I want to go into red? Do I want to take this hubris? Which one do I think is better, the Starfall or the Hubris right now? I guess I think they're probably even, to be honest. Um, I'm going to take the Hubris. Just sort of hope that we see more late blue that's as good as Hubris is. Pull from the deep. What does this do again? Turn an instant and a sorcery. Currently have instants, no sorceries. Uh, that's okay. Let's take it. Maybe I'll find a way to play it. Uh, we can take the shore stalker here. I don't have any issues with that. But there's also interpret the signs, which is, in my opinion, an actual legit card draw spell. I think you could end up drawing a million cards, so why not? I like the unblockable dude too, though. I do see why he's good. We only have two creatures currently. But this is that sorcery to make pull from the deep good. Um, I'm going to take the short stalker. Might be wrong. He's unblockable. He's a 1-1. One, one. I feel like that's really good. Uh, okay. I guess we take aspect here. Thos is devourer. Why not? He's playable. Certainly not amazing, but playable. Alright, well, we've got Rise of Eagles. Good finisher. Fourth to last pick, Blade Tusk Boar. That doesn't make sense. Rise of Eagles gives you some Constellation Triggers, which we currently don't have beyond the Thassa Devourer. I'm going to take the Font, because I like card draw, especially in a deck that already has a ton of removal like we do. Uh, Rotted Hulk. 4 mana, 2, 5, not terribly exciting. Nor is God Hunter Octopus, really, but we'll take it just because it's a little bit more of a finisher. Second to last pick, Aerial Formation is fantastic. That card is just good. Just good. So, happy to get that. Uh, kind of a weird pack one. Our removal that we got was fantastic, but we didn't end up with a ton of creatures. But we get to get one here. Spiteful Return is a great one. Can you imagine putting this on a Shore Stalker? That's a quick way to kill somebody. Nullify Stratus Walk, also good. Bolt and Searing Blood if I was in red. be pretty happy to pick those up. But not too much we can wheel out of here that I'll be happy about. Maybe Marshmiss Titan if we end up deeper in black, but I don't know if that's going to pan out either. Let's just take the Spiteful Return. Get past the Fenex, and we're in blue-black? Yes, please. That seems uncanny. So, taking Fenex, Course of the Tides, Archetype, Felhide Brawler, Eye Gouge, all cards. Eye Gouge is likely to wheel, which is good. I'll probably take that and sideboard it. Course of the Tides, maybe if I'm hopeful, we can wheel that. Archetype, I feel like, should wheel because it's not that great of a card, but I'd probably... Eh, I don't even know if I'd play it, to be honest. But Fenax, yes. Yes, I will. Okay, so there's Chorus of the Tides, but I think we're more in the Ari Worshippers camp, just because I love this card. Makes armies for you. Which is very good. This guy does evade, but this thing's just a better blocker, better attacker, I think. Maybe not a better attacker, but certainly a better blocker. And uh, it's uncommon. I don't know. I think it's better. I'm going to take it. Well, Eater of Hope. It's certainly on color. It's also Nyxborn Triton, though. 
and I do like bestow a lot, especially when we have an unblockable guy. Let's hide the non-blue, non-black at this point. Uh, Triton versus Eater of Hope. I think that's just straight up how it is. I think we just want the bestow. We don't have any real ramp to get to Eater, and he is a 7-drop. He is an excellent finisher, though. I'll definitely give him that. But I think I just want Bestow. It's so much more versatile. It's cheaper. I mean, this this one in particular. Come down on turn three, block, or later, make a guy huge. I think it's just better. Bestow is just really hard to pass. Okay. Well, we have the Bestow guy. We also have this guy, which I do like a lot. He has Intimidate. So putting a spiteful return on him is huge. And like the worshippers he makes, dudes. So that's that's pretty hard to argue. I do like the Eidolon a lot. But I think I'm just going to take the Sudama. We've got enough removal to really make him shine, potentially. And as much as I like Eidolon and Divination, I just think this guy could really do some work in our deck. Some real good options here. Retraction Helix, Nyxborn Eidolon, Sudden Storm. I think we're taking the Bestow guy, because we're still short on creatures. But I really wouldn't mind having Helix or Sudden Storm. Helix, not so much, I guess, in this deck, because we don't have as much Heroic. But we do have Inspired, which works really well with Retraction Helix. Something to keep in mind. I'm going to take the... I think I'm just going to take the uh, the Eidolon. I guess Black Oak of O. Dunos works best with Fenax, but no. We're going to take Eidolon. Get some more permanents. Alright, we could take Springleaf Drum, technically. Could ramp us, as well as fix us, as well as activate Inspired, which is in fact good. And the only thing we're really passing is what, a Sphinx Disciple? Is that a big deal? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like Inspired with Springleaf Drum is pretty good. I guess we go with the Disciple. I can just tap them with Fenax, so I'll do that instead if I can't attack. There we go. Oracle's Insight is a fantastic one to have with Inspired. And I'm definitely going to take that over the creatures and crypsis in here. Uh, I'm going to take the Nullify over the Stratus Walk. Could also take the Titan, I guess. But, not super impressed with it. I'm going to take the Nullify. I like the Stratus Walk, too. But, I mean, Stratus Walk is pretty good with both these guys. I don't know. I just like the Nullify. I like countering stuff having that control. So I could take the archetype of finality here. It did, in fact, table. I just don't even know if it's very good. I think it's just overpriced. Overpriced nonsense. But that being said, our deck doesn't really need eye gouge because we have good removal already. At least I thought we did. We actually haven't picked up any removal out of this pack, so I guess there's an argument for it. I just don't think I'm playing the archetype of finality straight up. Well, we would have gotten an eye gouge anyway, so maybe I should have taken it, but that's all right. Take the Felhide Brawler. Not likely to play it. Guess we could have been a mill deck of some sort. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll take Necrobite. Uh, wow. That shouldn't happen. I'm going to take that over the Flood Tide Serpent. There it is. Black Oak. Pretty good with our Fenex. I'm going to start hiding stuff already. We're at 26. Not likely to play that guy. I wouldn't like to play this, and I don't really want to play that. So we're already down to 11 creatures. So I think I'm just going to have to start replacing some of our weaker spells for, for better creatures. Well, we could take the Charlatan. It's actually really good with our Feast of Dreams, potentially, or our Hubris. So why not? It's also a rare and a creature. And a 2-3. Yeah. I don't see any reason to not take him here. 
Let's cut the... I think I already don't have many sorceries, so let's get rid of the pull from the deep. Well, we've got Grey Merchant. It's hard to argue against that. It's also Sea God's Revenge, which is great. Uh, we're more black than blue? No, I guess we're more blue. We're probably dead even. Grey Merchant's pretty good with our Fenex. Tormented Hero is a good, solid one drop. I think we're taking Grey Merchant. I can always hubris it too and then replay it. That seems really strong. I like the Sip of Hemlock. I like a lot of cards in this pack, but I think Grey Merchant's top tier. Okay, so now we have Hippocamp, which is cool with the Inspired guys, but I think we're more in Disciple of Fenax territory. This card can be really good utility to use. And we're not passing too much else, so, okay. Uh, Vaporkin, yeah, it flies. We've already got some Bestow, so why not? Could also take the Scourge Mark, but nah, I think we just go with Vaporkin. So I've already got to make some cuts. Let's get rid of the Necrobite. I guess we get rid of Aspect of Gorgon. Uh, let's get rid of the Felhide Brawler, because I don't like him. Okay. This is a good pack. We could take Baleful. We can take Omen Speaker. Both of those are really good. Uh, this thing having Death Touch is super relevant. Also gives you some devotion. Either way, I do like Omen Speaker a lot. But I think I still got to go with Bestow. I think when all else fails, just take Bestow. Really. And uh, what are we going to cut for this Baleful? It also works better, I guess, with Grey Merchant. What are we cutting for it? Uh, Eye Gouge. You don't need to be in here. All right. Let's take the Eidolon. Okay. Uh, do we want a Hippocamp? I don't think so. I'm not going to play it. I think I currently like everything I've got more than that. So... We should just hate instead. I think I'm going to hate the Titan Strength over the Skull Cleaver. Okay. So now we can do Cavern Lampad or Crackling Triton. I guess Lampad makes more sense. It bestows. Makes stuff unblockable. Oh, wow. Vrykus Cure. Yeah. I like that. Otherwise, we could take it as Second Disciple. Still good with Grey Merchant. But Farikas Cure, it's pretty hard to deny the Farikas Cure. Maybe I dump Aerial Formation. And maybe I get rid of... I'm actually not sure. Maybe this deck doesn't need the Shore Stalker. I mean... I'm definitely taking the Frykus here. Shore Stalker is unblockable, but when all is said and done, it's a one mana one one. So let's dump it. Let's take the Fate Foretold. This card's usually pretty playable. Um, Aqueous Form is good, but no, Aqueous Form is good. It's good on Worshippers and the Forlorn Sudama. But Dark Betrayal is a phenomenal sideboard card. And, to be honest, I don't even think I'm playing Aqueous Form. Just don't think I'm going to need it. So I'd rather sideboard Dark Betrayal. Same thing with Boon of Erebus. I just don't think I need it. Alright, here, I guess we'll hate Destructive Revelry because it's good against most of our deck. And I can at least deal with Vulpine Goliath most of the time. Uh, Scourge Mark, sure. Uh, neither of these matter. Alright, whatever. Okay. So, pretty decent looking blue-black deck. We've got card draw, we have removal, we have good spread of creatures, we have a Fenex. Which, you don't even need to have a mill strategy, and Fenex can just win the game. And limited especially, it's just bonkers. Alright, let's make this thing. Don't need these. Still want to play him, I think. Although he can't block, so I guess there's an argument against him. But he bestows. 
Hmm. The dilemma. We'll see. I might I might end up cutting it. Sadly, we have a couple guys that can't block, which is never good. I mean, Devourer works well with the Fenax, but I don't really care. This is 24, 15 creatures. Charlatan seems great in this deck. All of our real spells that we want to double are 2 mana. So this thing, legit, for 5 mana, can give us... Well, I guess double nullify doesn't mean anything, but double Phrykis Cure, double Hubris, double Feast of Dreams. I could see that being great. So I, I would like to cut one card. We do only top out at five, but I don't know. I still think I'd rather I'd rather cut a spell of some sort. I guess Aerial Formation is kind of the odd man out. It works well with our worshippers and Sudama, but we should already have the means to make them good, like all of this bestow. Oracle's Insight. And I don't want to cut any more creatures, really. I mean, I can see the argument for Scarhide, but like I said... It's just versatile enough where I don't mind playing it on two one as a or playing it on turn one as a beater or playing it late game as a pseudo removal spell. All right, let's dump the aerial formation and uh, look at where we're at. Yeah, this deck looks cool. Fifteen creatures, like I said, good removal. Um. What is the colors looking like in here? 13, 16, so I guess they're going to say 9, 8. Yeah, I think I can get behind that. I mean, I need double blue and double black early, but I do need double black more. Eventually. I think 9, 8's fine. Not going to be able to play Nullify consistently early, but that's okay too. Nullify is still good mid to late. Yeah, this is a good looking deck. We've got a lot of Bestow. We have... They double as good early game creatures, so that's nice. We have good removal. I'd rate this deck pretty high. Good card draw. Good finishers. I guess we don't have a ton of finishers. That is kind of the issue. We've got a flyer. We've got a Fenax. A couple flyers. A couple evasive guys. But we're definitely going to be a bestow and win sort of deck. Not like a heavy Heavy-duty beatdown deck, but... Alright, I'll see you guys round one.